I just put up the, uh, a video a few minutes ago, and um, after the sermon earlier this afternoon, apparently somebody um, who has control over the computer, and I'm thinking it's uh, somebody from MacArthur's little cluster, little group, little clan, um, decided to sabotage the last 10 minutes of the video. I'm not exactly sure why, and so I have to offer up my apologies. I, I sort of gave you an idea of what led up to it. If you read the article, uh, I went to a uh, I went to church earlier this morning to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Um, the Protestant churches are sort of booing me out of um, their congregation. I guess they're homosexuals, they're gay, and so they don't really like me coming in and fellowshipping with them, and being that I'm sick in my stomach, they don't like sitting next to me and feeling my stomach growl. So, in any case, um, I'm not really able to fellowship right now with the Protestant side, and so the Catholic are enduring it, and I am, and I appreciate it. But in any case, on my way home, I was asked by Melinda, because remember I told you I can hear her, um, I was asked to preach for about five minutes when I got to the Westlake Plaza area, there really was nobody there. Um, so I, I decided to use the stage there. On the left was a group of white guys, and on the right was a group of uh, females. They looked like, just white females, they looked like they were tourists more than anything. They didn't know what they were doing. Um, I preached for about 10 minutes, preached in English and then in Spanish, and then I went and got myself a cup of coffee and went home. On my way home, um, I went to Starbucks. On my way home, I, uh, I there was a new p newspaper stand, and there was a newspaper there with Whitney Houston on it, so um, I went in and got a copy and I heard Melinda say, hey, you know what, just to deal with the issue, you should take it, fold it, put it in a plastic bag and put it in, back, put it in a cupboard somewhere. You know, like you dealt with the issue because, you know, that came as a shock for everybody that the woman passed. Uh, and it's kind of hard, you know, to know how to deal with that issue. Um, there is another side to that issue, but I'm not ready to come out yet to say what I think it is or... Um, what is going on? I, I'm kind of leery, so I'm not going to really say much right now in this video, perhaps in the future, if they give me more input as to what's really going on. But in any case, um, I got home and decided to uh, start the video. I did the video, and um, the preaching video, uh, I, I didn't preach per se, uh, I played the recorder, and... Um, and somehow or another, as I was talking, when the when the cassette was done, as I was talking, they dubbed out everything that I said. Um, it ended at 38 minutes. 38 is Mark Rodriguez, and so he probably had something to do with it. Um, and 45, again, is Mark Rodriguez. 27 is one of the... Um, that was the age where I was, where I was removed out of Grace Community Church, but it also has significance to one of the divas that are out there, and I think she was 27 years old when she decided to come out on me for the community. But I won't say her name because I don't really see her as a part of this anymore. Uh, she was part of the hit that took place in 2009. But from what I was able to hear, there's four African American women on the diva level, or on the le on the level where uh, they're famous singers, actors, uh, news personnel. And I guess there's, there have representatives in the community that's supposed to carry out another hit against me um, on account of the Whitney Houston thing and, and some other things that are going on. Uh, you know, representing, I guess, white Klansmen in uh, the church, the community, what whatnot. I don't know. I'm, you know, when you're not American and you don't know what's really going on, <laughs> you know, you, you're just kind of like in your own, you're zoned out in your own world, you're not paying any attention, and then they just ca catches you off guard. You know, last time I was caught off guard on uh, Bus 148, you know, coming back from shopping at a safe way, and four African American women came out of nowhere and maced me in the face. You know, they came out all pissed off and I, you know, and it's sort of one of those bizarre things that you don't expect to happen to you ever, but then it does happen because you don't realize that the clan is watching you and paying attention to you and, you know, they're out to get you and that sort of thing and you get wigged out. Well, this is what's going on here. You know, I'm just living out my, my life and these people are wigging out. Um, I preach the gospel, they go crazy. I sing some silly song, they go crazy. I write a book, they go nuts, <laughs> you know. Um... I think after I was done preaching, or after I was done doing the recording earlier, uh, 
either Gabriel or somebody from the gay community came into the apartment and cleaned out my my privates and had their way with it. I I don't know. These people are they're in their own world and they judge by their own standards. I you know I I'm not used to this sort of thing, so this is just I'm, I still can't get used to the idea of of a males being any more than this close to me. You know what I mean? I, I'm I'm still. Kind of like, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still like, maintain your distance. You know, the Bible says greet one another with a holy kiss. But, I mean, I, I don't really want to believe that God wants me to be tonguing some dude. And so, I, I, I don't think I want to go into any Protestant churches with that mindset toward my brothers, if they're my brothers. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you, you don't know. But in any case, long story short, there is one thing I want to say, though. Um, I ever heard somebody saying, you know, you need to be uh, supported by your own race. And I, I kind of took offense to that because, you know, Jesus was a Jew and he was not supported by his race. Um, the twelve apostles were chosen by the Father and given to him. Um, the people who did come to salvation were mixed. Uh, they were a mixed group according to Acts chapter 2 um, when the Holy Spirit descended upon them. Um, you know, the whole point of salvation, and, and Jesus commanded for us to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, not just all people, all race, and, you know, us four no more, and that's it. Don't ever come near us because it's our little cluster of people. I don't think that's God's mindset toward the church. Uh, on earth or in heaven, I think somebody has a misunderstanding of God's um, intentions. And so there's no... You, the, your race who is lost um, is your is your heart, is your field in which you do the ministry in your race cannot uh, support you Christians the church are those people who support the ministry people who have the Holy Spirit who believe as you believe and who can identify with you in Christ but just because a person is black it doesn't mean that they're gonna agree with what I teach or Haitian or Cuban are from the African American community it doesn't mean that they're going to embrace my gospel and what I teach and the ministry that I have. And so I can't depend on my color or my race to support me. But what God clearly states in the Bible is that it is the church's responsibility to support one another. Uh, churches that are not racist. There are churches out there that are very racist. I believe that Grace Community Church may be one of those churches where on the facade, on the surface, they appear to be um, expositional and Bible-believing, but when it comes to dealing with um, perhaps lifting up men from other nations, races, tribes, uh, even appointing elders you know, from other countries, people from, from the black world, you know, I don't. I think they might have a hard time with that, and uh, they might not be able to, you know, lend hand or support. And and maybe that's the reason why the church hasn't been established yet under my leadership. And I think these people from Grace Community Church, uh, MacArthur and Rodriguez, and even the Haitian uh, woman, Gabrielle, they're having a hard time in giving me the respect of a leader and 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 respecting me as a man of God and. They're expecting me to still be that little 19-year-old or the little 5-year-old boy that they might have known years ago. And so, you know, they're still not respecting me for the man that God has made me to be today, you know, in the church and in the nation as a preacher. And so, you know, they're expecting me to perhaps go back to Haiti and look for support, not so much from the Haitian church, but um, look for support from the Haitian people. And you know what? The Haitian people don't have a responsibility to support me. The American people don't have a responsibility to support me. Uh, gay Americans, white Americans, black Americans, you know, whatever American is out there. But it's the Church of Jesus Christ that has a responsibility to come alongside and to support. Uh, why? Because we are the body of Christ. We are the brethren. 1 Corinthians 12 makes it very clear that it is our responsibility. We have gifts that have been given to us by God. We have positions, according to Ephesians 4. I think there are a lot of racist white people in the in the church, and these racist white people have the tendency to wash out. You know, I call them whitewash. You know, I insult them directly, and I call them, you know, you're a whitewash group of people because you're discriminating against me because I'm Haitian and I'm Cuban and you think that I can't lead you 
you think that I can't give you the leadership of the Holy Spirit and you think I can't give you the same teaching and doctrine because because I'm yellow or because I'm brown, my hair is kinky or I'm too short, I'm not six feet tall that's a bunch of hogwash and you know people judge me on account of those standards which are not even Christian standard but they're probably gay clan American standards which are used in congregations where it's all English European and the African man doesn't have a foot in the door and that's probably Grace Community Church and that's the reason why I can't seem to keep my videos clean keep my uh, computer running without it shutting down uh, you know get anybody to come to a prayer meeting a Bible study or to show up it's racist bigoted prejudiced people like MacArthur and Franklin and Rodriguez which is a Hispanic who I think in the community might have been representing Franklin that has these ideologies against me and against African males you know there are four nations as I've said last week that have come over uh, from the East to this West Coast. That's the English, the French, the Spanish from Spain, and the African. And the and the and the group that suffers most is the African. We're down in Haiti and the Caribbean. The others, the other white races, that is the English came to America, the French went to Canada, and the Spanish went to South America and Mexico. We Africans became Caribbeaners. That's just how God gave it to us. But yet on the east we have the bigger you know we have the bigger continent unfortunately God did not increase our continent on this side I was hoping that he would and that he would make some room for us in the United States and um, maybe even give us Alaska but you know what he hasn't and so it's difficult to be a minister on the African side and trying to reach out to a bunch of devils and heathens or white skinned people who have um, demon possessed spirits uh, within them ruling them running their lives and then for us to give them the gospel of God and with the love of God and not be pissed off when they discriminate against you and tell you you know you're not their equal because of your race your color and the fact that you're you know you're the only race that doesn't have property on this side you know when they discriminate and they look down on you and they hit you every time you even blink you know whatever you do for Christianity they, they you know they tell you you're not the leadership and you're not the person to to give them leadership and yet the kingdom of God is not as such the kingdom of God are those who possess the spirit of God and who knows God and God loves them and God has given them um, his his Holy Spirit in the position that he wishes for them to have just because a person is born on the African side it does not mean that God doesn't have a position of authority for them the American continent for the first time is being governed by an African American mixed with both black and white and I tell you the truth is no different in any church congregation and so I think it's a very immature position for any white society group clan cluster of people takes to think that someone cannot give them leadership on account of their skin color um, in the church um, or on account of their inability to speak clearly you know the Spanish language or the French language or the Creole or whatever it is that they're using to discriminate and to keep the brother or the sister from being able to do what God has called him or her to do in the faith and so the reason why you have this video here all sabotage it's because of those people those people who belittle you and they look down on you and they cut you down and they say that you know what we're not gonna let you get through we're not gonna let you publish your book you know, we're gonna make sure that when the book is published something is gonna be wrong with it so that the American people can know you're not straight you know they have this misnomer that Africans are always lusting after white their white flesh you know Africans are always wanting and desiring them therefore they're not a straight people and you shouldn't allow them into your congregation because all they're the only reason why they're there is to lust after you let me be the first to tell you that is not true when we go to church we go to church to worship God if you are even the church right just because you're a white group or clan or cluster of people gathering together and somebody standing behind the podium and preaching it doesn't necessarily mean that you are born-again Christians because it 
it could be that you have all the, the, the building and the pews and the hymnals and the Bibles and you're not even born again in your heart and you're still practicing cleanliness and homosexuality and God knows what else is in, in your heart to practice and as soon as the Negro comes in you know your hair stands up and your skin turns color and you're fuming at the nose and the nostrils and you're ready to destroy uh, the person for overstepping their boundaries and coming into your all white um, community or your all white church the church of Jesus Christ is not all white the church of Jesus Christ began with Hebrews and the command was for them to go into all nations and make disciples of all nations not just one group and so perhaps this theme that I'm dealing with with MacArthur is just a test of faith to see whether or not I can hang on to the Christian faith no matter what he throws at me I think he's fighting God not me he's fighting the Holy Spirit and the scriptures and I'm just the one that's having to endure the hits as they come um, there's so much more to be said but I think I've said enough so that you understand where you know how I'm responding to the videos uh, being sabotaged and he's done this countless times you know sometimes he dubs out the voices other times it's um, you know last time he he took out the he took out 45 minutes of the video this time he reversed it um, I preached a sermon out outside and he took out 40 35 minutes of a 45 minute video now he reversed it and took out uh, 10 minutes out of a 45 minute video and why are they doing this hate because they don't have a they don't really have any any part in the work of the kingdom so they really don't understand God and, and they don't care about God they only care about the racial issue the fact that their race is first and their race can do whatever their race want and it's always a racial thing and so that's why it's so difficult to plant churches because you're you're having to deal with the racial issue now in the body right in the body of people that are calling themselves believers and so in the midst of the wheat there are tears right in the midst of um of the hay there there are needles right um and so it's it's one of those things where i got to be careful because now i enter into congregations and find out that the entire congregation is is dead spiritually and these people are demons you know and they hate and so and and, and not only do they hate, but they hit. So with the hatred comes the hit, and with the hit comes whatever else they, they're they willing to do um, to shut me down. And so I've got to be careful. So I give you this word of, 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 um, word of warning that um, this website is not going to be a clean, clear, crisp uh, website as I would have wanted it to be because of what others are doing outside of um, of the website to sabotage and, and to keep me from having a clean testimony and to keep me from having a clean uh, walk with God um, and will do anything and everything that they possibly can do to basically destroy um, whatever I put my hands to do um, I think now that the next thing is is my life they want to shorten it um, uh, just to make sure that I don't rise up to the English level that is to become an author and a, a real pastor a real elder and a, a real Bible teacher um, never make it to radio and television you know that sort of mentality you know the, the people that are constantly keeping you down holding you back um, <laughs> you know keeping you gay instead of being able to marry somebody you love it, it, I think that's their more or less their their thinking you know what kind of people think that way Right, unless they're they're demon possessed, and you know, hateful people who have nothing but um, wickedness inside of their hearts, right? Continuously. So I, I tell you this because maybe you're not dealing with it, but on this end, this is what they're dishing out. And so, uh, don't be alarmed by anything that you find on this website that's gonna um, upset you or tick you off. Uh, and if something does upset you and take you off, pray. Say, you know, this guy's out of line for saying these things, but you have to understand everything is done within context, right? I would rather be in a church congregation, pastoring and preaching and teaching, um, doing the work of the ministry than standing in a corner and preaching salvation after 13 years, right? I'd rather, or 14 years, I, I'd rather be in a, in a congregation where the body of Christ is supporting the teaching of the Word than being on the internet and talking to you this way 
right? And who knows, maybe you're the only person who's watching this video. Um, maybe you're the only person that even knows that this uh, website exists. Um, for that, I would say pray and ask that God would deliver me out of this situation like he delivered Israel out from under Pharaoh. And these people are certainly walking in the shoes of Pharaoh. And so let's just hope and cross our fingers that God will send ten plagues their way. You know, so they, so they could release me and, and I could be free of, of, uh, of their judgment. Because this has been a long uh, road and it's, you know, it's irritating not to be able to put something clean on the internet uh, without it being sabotaged or hit uh, like these people have. In any case, I'm going to let you go and um, talk to you later.